Family are still processing what happened four months ago. The teen was shot in the head and arm after going to the wrong house to pick up his younger siblings. He sat down exclusively with Good Morning America about healing and moving forward. The people who are who are good, who are supportive, they vastly outnumber all of those, all of the hateful and like violent people in this world. And I'm just leaning on that support to be sure that I stay strong. Sitting in his family's living room, preparing to start his senior year of high school, 18 weeks, more than 128 days had passed since the night that changed Ralph Jarl's life. I went over I would this, like think of the details. I was like, crying about it because it just seems so surreal that people would, would like be so harmful. April 13th, Ralph was picking up his twin brothers from a play date when he mistakenly went to the wrong house, knocking on the door of Andrew Lester's home. The 84 year old man allegedly armed with a gun and opened fire on Jarl. Since then, life has been anything but normal for the now 17 year old, not only making a remarkable recovery medically, but also striving to heal mentally. The therapist I've been going to has just been like trying so many things to like to like lessen the trauma. I know Ralph was the one in the center of this, but yeah. it's the whole family thing. We are all carrying this. Though Ralph carries the physical scars from that fateful night, his mom Cleo, sitting next to her son's aunt, says the trauma of what happened is a burden shared by his family. It's hard for my husband to sleep sound at night because he was asleep when we, the kids and I started screaming that Ralph is shot, Ralph is shot. Yeah. So he has nightmares about that. Even his 11 year old twin brothers, who she says grow anxious when Ralph isn't home by dark. Then they start asking, where is he? When is he going to be home? And we're working on the feeling that they shouldn't carry any guilt because he went to pick them up from a play date uh -huh. when all of this happened. So trying to make them understand that it's still okay to go on play dates. But getting the whole family the help they needed wasn't easy. Fortunately, an online fundraiser that raised more than $3 million helped ease the financial burden. Now, Ralph and his family are aiming to be a helping hand to other families impacted by gun violence, selling bracelets and donating part of the proceeds. The name? Hope by Faith Spoonmore. Hope, which the family says they clung to tightly in the last four months. Hope, literally, is a lifeline. My first thing was, God, I hope he stays alive to see the reason behind this. Mm. I hope it is not his time, you know? And then fast forward now. Now, hoping for justice, as a preliminary hearing for the accused shooter charged with first degree assault is next week. What do you think it'll be like to see the man accused of shooting your son? I've prayed about it and I would, I've left it in God's hands and whatever it is, it is. For Ralph, he's focused on leading the clarinet section of his high school's band and looking ahead to another internship he's already lined up and already weighing whether he'll go to prom. Regular kid stuff. He has strength that I want to have. What do you think about? You're already, I mean, seeing a lot of your peers with band, but being like back in the classroom. I feel good about it because I know they, they have good intentions and they're just out to hope and pray for me and hope that I'm doing well. The man charged with shooting Ralph Yarl, Andrew Lester, is scheduled to be in Clay County Court Thursday, August 31st. We will have continuing coverage of this case as it moves through the court. Stick with us on air and online.